every time we do, we do a video, you guys always leave questions and comments. And it's hard for me to get back to them sometimes. And uh, I figured, let's do a little video. I'll pull up the best questions you guys gave us, and I'll answer them. Right? Frankie's yep. good idea. And Frankie's going to Frankie's gonna narrate this whole thing. So hope you hope you're ready for Frankie Energy. My sweet, sultry voice behind the camera. And I got a lot going on today. I got a hockey suite for the, for the Devils game with all my friends. And uh, tomorrow, I have a special guest swinging by the store. I'm not going to say who it is. Just get ready. Peace. Frank, ask away. All right. Let's do this. All right. First question comes from, uh, pardon me right now if I say your name's wrong. Uh, D stay lore one two three. Why don't you like Grip Edge? <laughs> uh, Grip Edge is a bully of a company, and I like to get, listen. The name of our company is Jersey Discount Tools, and our premise is when we started this is to give deals to you guys. So when I have a company making me, in my opinion, overcharge you guys, I got a problem with it. I mean, the markup on Grip Edge is insanely high. And what they're doing is they're inflating the value of their product because they're, they're selling to Snap, not Snap-on, to Mac, uh, Cornwell, their own brand. And, you know, so they're inflating the price. If we sold it for what it should be, and trust me, mine's the cheapest in the country, and I'm still making too much money on it, in my opinion. But, you know, it is what it is. But that's why I don't like them. They're a bully company. The owner is a douchebag. You can tell him I said that too. I don't care. He's an Australian guy that's this tall. He's got more skeletons in the closet than I do. Trust me. And he wants to go down that road? Let me know. I'm ready. This one's coming from Cam30. If a person was looking for a tool from a manufacturer you handle, can we get it from you if they're out of stock? When you say it's out of stock, nobody has it or the manufacturer doesn't have it. On a question like that, whatever you're looking for, your best bet is to call the store and the store does have a phone it's an older model but we do have a phone in, at the store so the number's right there one eight three three j send it we can answer any question we can find any tool you are currently looking for we have a lot of stock a lot of inventory a lot of time your local dealer can't get something but we will have it in stock because when we buy tools we buy bulk such as the the lyle disconnect flyers right frankie yep and the, the quarter inch, the little uh, Lyle quarter pry bar, mm -hmm. Astro 17 millimeter flex handles. We buy and buy the boxes, the crates, the cases. When we don't, we, listen, we, when we find something that we think is going to sell big, we buy a pallet. That's what we do here because we don't want to be left shorthanded, right? Next one we got coming from uh, Scott's 4125. What happened to Joe and how is he doing? Everybody always asks, what happened to Joe? Joe is very involved with the church. He came here and he was part-time because he was very involved with the church at the time. And it came a time when he had to make a decision in life, whether he was going to stay here, which we thought he was going to, or he was going to move on and go full-time in the church. And I think at the end of the day, he went back to the church. Joe was doing well. He married a very nice uh, wife. She's a friend of ours also. We love her. His mom's a sweetheart. He's got a lot of good family, and Joe's going to do fine. And if Joe wanted a job tomorrow, the door's open for him, and he knows that. I hope that puts it to rest. All right, this one's coming from Funk FPV. If you were <laughs> lobotomized and had to go back to selling tools from a truck, what tool company would you rep? Okay, so that's a great question. And Funk FPV is a very, very, very big YouTuber, TikToker, Instagrammer. He's got a huge following, and... Uh, he's, you know, he's he's a customer, he's a friend, he's a nice guy. I talk to him once in a while on on social media, and uh, he's given me a lot of good advice through the years, and I like him. He's a good guy. He's 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 the guy that does the sar sarcastic thing. You ever see him? Yeah. You've seen him? Mm -hmm. Have you really? Yeah, we're watching him this morning. Oh, okay, yeah, I like Funk Funk TV. That's a good question. Uh, I would listen. Let's let, let's 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 play devil's advocate here. Let's go backwards. I wouldn't go to Mac Tools for a a million dollars in a bag. Wouldn't do it. Could, wouldn't do it. Mac is a, a loser company destined for failure. Why'd you that, go to their show then? Because <laughs> I had to see what was going on, Frankie. <laughs> I wanted that nice shirt. Second would be Cornwell. And the reason being, I could not drive around with a truck that said Cornwell on the side and everybody would say Cornhole, Cornhole, Cornhole all day to you. And Cornwell is nothing but a glorified independent tool truck that slaps their names on other things. I don't care if I hurt your feelings. I really don't care. 
this is my feelings. You asked me. Okay, third. This is a harder one because now we only got two left. We got Mako and Snap-on. And if you asked me a couple of years ago, I might have changed my, 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 my answer to this. But the third would be Matco. And it would have to be Snap-on. And I'll tell you why. Because, and for the record, full disclosure, for a million dollars, a free tool truck with inventory in it, I would not drive work for Snap-on corporate on any level. I'm, I'm on a camera, so right hand to God, cross my heart and hope to die. I wouldn't go there with a gun to my head. But I have to answer the question for my friend. And the reason being is that Snap-on has a formula that if you follow it like a robot and drink the Kool-Aid, okay, they give you a protected area. And they're the only company out there that has protection of their brand and the tools they sell. And I'm gonna leave it at that. So it would be snap on, but I wouldn't do it for a million dollars. No lie. Coming at you from Bylin or By Bylin. There's, I think that's how I say it. Sorry. Will your replacement grips work for Klein? Uh, our replacement grips are uh, very universal. If you put a little heat to them, they'll slide on anything. You could use hairspray, is what we use here when we use them normally. Yeah. Um, they're, the the problem with them is they're hit and miss because on some stuff it's not going to work so good and on some stuff it works fantastic. We always say try a set. If you like them, buy more. And we can't possibly make a different handle for every tool made. You know, so they're really nice. They're very good quality. They work better than anybody else's out there. Nobody else has anything like that, but we do. So give them a shot. I mean, the quality is going to be just as good as what, what Klein's using. I can guarantee that. I mean, we use a very, very thick uh, plastisol is, is what it's called, and they, it works very, very good. Robert Applegate 6046 says, toolbox, uh, toolbox widget, and how has the tool truck been? Thanks for being awesome. Okay, toolbox widget, they have a novel idea. I don't like it. Early on in, in their business, they sent me a couple samples. And when I'm opening them up out of the box, they were literally breaking and falling apart in pieces. So their quality was, listen, I don't know what they're making now, but I'm talking about when they sent me the samples they sent me, it was absolute trash. Magnets were falling apart. They're in two pieces, so they were popping apart. And I simply went over to the garbage can and threw them away. Wow. They were, they were garbage. I mean, like, so I mean, like, when everybody's going gaga for a toolbox widget, I mean, I don't, I, the ones they sent me were absolute trash. And right now they're flooding the market with their brand, Toolbox Widget, Toolbox Widget. And I mean, like, I mean, I, I, I met the I met the wife. She does not like me. I met the the, the, the owner, the, the the man of the relationship, and he's not a bad guy. And uh, they they play the uh, you know Made in America. I'm a you know vet. That's all great, but like, eh, I don't think it's Made in America anymore. They bombarded the internet with guerrilla marketing, and. If you do a, a draw of your toolbox, it's going to cost you a couple hundred dollars. That's insane. That's insane, right? Yeah. But what, what, what I've noticed is since they've started jamming that toolbox widget shit down people's throats, we've been selling the earned stuff like crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, in, we cannot keep it in stock. We order cases and cases of it. It's flying out the door. And so, you know, hey, toolbox widget, thanks. You, I, you, you made me some money. I can't even pronounce this one, so I'll just put it up on the screen. Put it uh, on the screen, this guy. Does Home Depot sales prices of Milwaukee cordless tools affect your prices? Absolutely, 100%. And the reason why it does is because corporate America is strangling businesses like myself. Uh, there's a lot of people that are bigger than me, a lot of people that are smaller than me, but corporate America, whether it's the Amazons, the Home Depots, the Lowe's, they control the market to everybody. They put a price on, and that's what the market falls in line with. So yes, corporate America is putting every small business out of business. And keep on supporting Amazons and you know the Home Depots of the world, and soon there's going to be nobody left out there. But that's fine, guys. I'm 58. When it's over, I'm good. I'll retire. You know, I don't care. I do this for I do this for the young generation, for you guys. But uh, yeah, and you know what? A lot of times, some of the stuff you see them selling is not the same stuff we're selling. They do a little bait and switch. So remember the, uh, Frankie, do you remember the uh, half inch impact A and B debacle? Oh yeah, I remember that. Just saying, all the ones I sold 
were A models. See, this next one's coming from uh, George Louis 9904. I want to know who Mr. Subaru is. Was he a snap-on dealer, certified mechanic? Who was he, etc. So Rob Lazenby, I really don't know much about him. I, I found him on on the internet, and he's a he's an arrogant. Listen, I'm cocky, I'm arrogant, and I'm a successful businessman. Him, he's cocky, arrogant, condescending, deletes people, bans people, blocks people. And at the end of the day, when I first like ran into him and he was trash talking me, I'm like, what's this guy's deal? Why does he hate me? But I would hate me too if I was a field snap-on dealer. And again, I, 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 don't, I could be wrong, but rumor has it, three times he went out of business with snap-on. He was an assistant or something. I don't know his life, but this is the stories that people tell me. So this is all allegedly, so... I, again, I, I don't know, I, but I did meet the guy. I'll, tell, I'll get to that. And as far as, uh, you, if you listen, you see me, I'm dressed with the shirt on. It's got a logo on it, J.D. Tico. I'm currently employed by J.D. Tico. It's a business that I own and run. Frankie has a J.D. Tico sweatshirt on also. Why? Because we're currently working at J.D. Tico, right? Yeah. So Mr. Subaru walks around in his videos with a Subaru shirt, a, a dealer shirt, with his little pocket square thing with all his little tools in it. So he's portraying himself as a Subaru technician. Meanwhile, he's not. Was he one? I, I, would, I would assume he was one at one time. But I mean, like, clearly he couldn't make it at the dealership because he's no longer there. Right? I mean, makes sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, do, you, know, do, you know, do the math on that. So, I mean, field tool dealer, field tech, and he talks very nice and people like to watch him. Okay, but I did meet him at the uh, tool show and I walked over to him, put my arm around him and said, hey, uh, Robbie, I said, the lawnmowers are out front. You might want to check them out. We're at the Milwaukee booth. That's a true story. Funniest thing I ever did in my life. If, if he's happy conning the industry that he's a Subaru tech and everybody should listen to him, then do it. But he's such a good you see, you watch his videos? He's like, why do you do that? Like, who does that? What are you, six? Pico 67SS says are japanese ratchets really made in japan or are they made in taiwan assembled and polished in japan listen at the end of the day nobody's going to know the answer to that i mean i could dig a little deeper if i have to but this is all i'm going to say to you if you're if if you were going to say is if something stamped made in taiwan okay or vietnam and what can you what i'd say that originated in china went to taiwan to get finished or vietnam the new China to get finished? Yes, I believe that every day. I and I'm not going to call anybody out, but there's a lot of tools right now that, that are that's that are saying made in Vietnam, but they're getting made in China, shipped to Vietnam, and finished. And let's leave it at that. RGM uh, 2023 asks, Do you think Astro or Gear Wrench will come out with a locking flex head with a quarter inch body and a three eighths anvil? Guys, I'm pretty sure Gear Wrench has already done it, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure Astro has also. Yes, but I think they've already done it. And I think there's plenty of options out there that have that, Nepros being probably the best. But locking ratchets, I do not even like selling them because the failure point is going to be the, the, the locking mechanism. I think Milwaukee makes a beautiful, beautiful one. Yeah. Milwaukee makes a quarter-inch body, three-eighths head, flex lock. They already have it. By Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Listen, Gear Wrench is on its last leg, guys. That's the, I shouldn't say last leg. It's the biggest company in the world. Bigger than Snap-on, bigger than Mac, bigger than everybody. But I think they're going to be done with the automotive industry real fast. Ken Champness 8240 asks, do you think that the USA tool manufacturing uh, industry can survive in this economy? I mean, what's left of the, what, what's left of it? I mean, who's out there? There's, no, there's not really many people out there that are, you know, I mean, Ernst is a USA-made company, and they're holding fast. But you know, they're at the end of the day, they're they're pouring plastic into a mold, injection mold. So they're, you know, I think they'll be okay. As far as any kind of like metal or any kind of in industrial industry, it's hard. I mean, there's so many laws and regulations and unions that have all these companies handcuffed. Listen, I I get about a hundred of my own tools manufactured, made, brought in from all over the world. Yes, the USA, yes, China, yes, Vietnam, yes, not Japan, right? No, India. But like, it's very hard to deal with American companies, A, because there's not many left. 
that I grew up in Patterson down the street. There was a there was a screwdriver manufacturer on my street as a kid. True story. I mean, you know, that's back in World War II. We collect World War II stuff. On the back of everything made in World War II, it tells you where. It didn't say made in USA. It says made in Ohio, made in Chicago, made in New York because everything was made in USA. Now nothing is. MCF Welding asks, "Do you think you can outweld me?" Did Matt ask if I can outweld him? Well, I did I, a couple years ago on my, I, I should find that video, it's a great video. I collect World War II Jeeps and I, on my Jeep, the bumperettes, these little hoops are, uh, I have one here. The little bumperette hoops are, everything on a Ford Jeep is marked with a Ford script F. In World War II, Henry Ford is out of his mind, so every part on a, on a GPW Jeep has an F on it. So I had a beautiful F script on my, on my bumperette but it was bent really bad. So I got a Willys one, I cut it, cut the GPW one live on the ear, and I laid a bead down, like Jesus Christ came down, ascend it, descend it, like Jesus Christ descended from heaven to my street, fired the welder up and laid the perfect bead down, it lightly ground it down like it never even happened. I challenge every other tool dealer in the country to beat my, beat my welds. Can I out weld Matt? Probably not. He's a professional welder and my friend, but uh, uh, I can weld. Jason Malikin 5620 says, what's something in the tool industry that surprised you uh, the most and you had no idea about before getting into the position you are now? That's a good one. I was at, I'll, I'll say things I really don't care. I was, I was at a, 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 a company that's in New Jersey, Master Cool. And I was dropping some, I was getting something fixed. And I watched what they were doing as far as bringing tools in and relabeling the boxes. They had a full crew peeling off labels and putting on Snap On, putting on Mac, putting on Maco, putting on Cornwell, putting on their own name, full crew. And I said to myself, holy shit, I actually thought these people. And it's not just them, it's everybody made their own tools. No, you people think that Snap-on has a plant making everything. They don't, they don't. They bring it in and they relabel it or they have it relabeled for them. But this industry is full of smoke and mirrors. And I mean, I literally <clears throat> have seen it, witnessed it and do it myself now. Because if they're doing it, why can't I do it? But don't worry, they'll call you out when you do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I do it, it's like, you did this! And I'm like, they've been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> Douglas Smiles 1215 asks, in your opinion, what former great USA made tool brand that has been sold out that's now foreign made but still holds high respect and quality, if any? I mean, that's a hard one. I mean, I think Irwin did for a while. I think they've they've slipped a little bit. You know, uh, Milwaukee, how about Milwaukee? I mean, Milwaukee was a made in USA tool, now it's made in China. It's a fantastic tool, fantastic tool no matter where it's made. So I think, you know what, I'll give that round to Milwaukee, right? I mean, nice. Milwaukee is, is an American company and now it's all made in China and it's as good as it ever was. It's, be, it's the best, there, Milwaukee is the best in the industry. So you know what, Milwaukee wins this round. Milwaukee, send me the new rotary tool, thank you. <clears throat> Rhino Dude says, how did you end up in the tool business? Well, I always liked tools. I was always fascinated by tools. I was a mechanic. My family owned a trucking company and I always worked on stuff there. And as a young kid, I always bought tools and the, the Snap-on guy would come by. His name was Guy Tollop and our Mac guy's name was Bob Rabe. And I was always fascinated by their trucks and I always bought tools from them. And when my family decided to sell the trucking company, I kind of, you know, needed a job because I didn't want to work for anybody. And I said, you know what? I can sell tools. And I went to Snap-on and they turned me down because they said I was too young. <laughs> I was 19 years old, Frankie. 19. Hmm. And then I went to Mac and Mac turned me down at first too. But then we had a mutual friend in, in the trucking industry and Bob Ketchabevy. You ever heard of the name before? Yep because now he's an owner of Easy Red. Mm -hmm. He put me in business with Mac Tools. I should probably never talk to him again for doing that, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm here and I'm successful. Thank you to, to Bob Ketchabevy, who is currently one of the owners of one of my favorite companies, my friends at Easy Red. That's how I got into the tool business. And you know, listen, I was a Mac Tool dealer for 18 years and was I successful? Listen, I put a roof over my family's head. I put kids through school. Was I successful? Yeah. Did I make as much money as I wanted to? No. 
when I left Mac Tools in 2003 and started working on becoming this, am I successful now? I'm pretty successful now. I'll be in Monaco next month uh, with the great, my good friend, Rob Freddy, zooming around the countryside. And I'll rent I rented it. You know what I rented? I'm not going to say what I rented. it. I'm going to leave that for tomorrow's video. What car I rented? You know what I rented? Nope. Good. I'm hanging at Rob, Rob Friday tonight too, for the record. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. Go to the hockey game with him. This is our final question. Final question. Let's uh, wrap this up. This comes from Chucky. Will Vim's hiring of Clay Coon cause a lack of attendance at Vim's company picnic? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. I love my friends at Vim. They're good people. And unfortunately, Clay Coon is the black cloud of the tool industry. I said it here. Anything he touches has went to sh the police department, his trucking company, his truck repair shop, Trivis Tools, Mobile Tool Network. Five times. It is what it is. I love I love them. They're my friends, but I do not care to be any involvement with that gentleman. Well, I will leave it at that. Hey guys, I had fun doing this. It was fun. And uh, maybe in a couple months we'll do it again. And listen, at the end of the day, we're here to have fun, mix things up. And, uh, and, and next next time we ask for your questions, leave them in the comments and we'll uh, answer anything we could. I answered everything. Did I answer everything, Frankie? Yeah. There's only there was only one thing that didn't get that didn't get put in the video. I'll say uh, it right yeah, now. I, I didn't want to go. I, I, I didn't want to go down that road. We'll leave that for another day. How about that? Yeah, because I mean, like, you know, listen, I, I'm trying to be positive. Zen. Peace. <laughs>